Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're talking about my recommendations and how you can get into muzzleloading in 2024. The most common muzzleloading types, at least here in the United States, are broken up into three categories based on ignition type. The first type, because of its importance to American history, is going to be the flintlock muzzleloaders. This is really pre-Civil War, pre-1820. So you have a flint and steel striking to ignite your main charge. Think last the Mohicans, think the Patriot. Then you've got your percussion ignition muzzleloader. Think Jeremiah Johnson. This is primarily 1820s through the American Civil War and really the last muzzleloading type before cartridge and smokeless arms were invented. Percussion can also include revolvers depending on how you think about muzzleloading arms. Then last but certainly not least, based on its market size and popularity, the inline muzzleloader is our third type of muzzleloader. Like with anything else, when you're considering purchasing a new piece of gear or kit for whatever hobby that you're interested in, use is going to dictate need. If you're just looking for a couple extra weeks of hunting season, or you're looking to try something new without going full bore into the history side of things, inlines are gonna be the easiest thing for you to get involved with. For many folks out there, flintlock and percussion muzzleloaders are considered passion muzzleloaders. They're seen as a little more complex. They take a little bit more work to get familiar with. They're a little different than modern arms, unlike the inlines, which are kind of a hybrid, but they are, I think, across the board, the most fun kinds of muzzleloaders to get into. Whereas your inline muzzleloaders are really limited to your hunting season and some competitions around the country, you can do just about anything you want with your traditional flintlock or percussion muzzleloader that's out there. You can hunt, you can trek, you can go to living history events, you can go to rendezvous, you can shoot for fun, you can join your local club and compete in competitions. The possibilities really with a traditional muzzleloader are endless. My recommendation for getting into muzzleloading and a first time muzzleloader in the past has been a percussion muzzleloader because of its ease of use compared to the flintlock muzzleloader. The percussion cap offers a lot of advantages over the flintlock, especially for a newcomer, and it can be less frustrating, but I'm moving away from that here in 2024 because cap distribution has been so funky in the last three years. So my recommendation for a newcomer into muzzleloading in 2024 is going to be the flintlock style muzzleloader. You're going to see a lot of writing on forums and Facebook groups and comment sections about flintlocks being finicky. You're going to see it on popular media hunting shows about them being trouble, being difficult to get working. Very accurately describes my relationship with this gun. But I'm telling you, if you can stick with it and learn just a little bit about it, the flintlock muzzleloader is gonna be the most accessible muzzleloader for you in 2024. I'm recommending the flintlock muzzleloader because you don't need anything to shoot it but lead, patching, and real black powder. Whereas a percussion revolver or a percussion Hawkins style rifle is kind of a paperweight really if you don't have percussion caps or if we don't have good distribution of percussion caps across the country. The flintlock muzzleloader can ignite its main charge with the same powder of the main charge. So if you can only afford one or two pounds of real black powder for your flintlock muzzleloader, you can use your main charge powder and your priming powder to keep shooting, limiting the amount of supplies that you need and keeping you shooting longer. Flintlocks do need real black powder to work the best. People can use and people have used black powder substitutes over the years, but I'm telling you, if you can get your hands on some real black powder, it's gonna be a lot more of an enjoyable experience for you. Getting real black powder can be difficult. That's gonna be one of the first hurdles for you into getting into muzzle loading in 2024. You're not gonna be able to go down to your local sporting goods store typically, and pick up the real black powder that you need. There are distributors for a variety of kinds of powder across the country. The main three brands here in the United States are going to be Schutzen, Swiss, and Goex. Schutzen and Swiss are imported from Europe and Goex is made in Louisiana as of 2023. If a black powder distributor or retailer is not in your area, don't fret, you can ship real black powder to your house for a small hazardous materials fee or hazmat fee. If you've ordered primers or black powder substitutes to your home in the past, you might be familiar with this fee. It varies from about 12 to 20 or so dollars per order on top of your 
payment for your product and your taxes and your shipping. Some retailers will include this in the price of the powder or you can catch them on free hazmat shipping deal weekends sometimes. So you wanna keep an eye out on the major retailers that are out there for some of those deals. I understand that the extra added fee of that hazmat fee on top of your order can be a hindrance and it, it can be a bit of a bummer, but if you order multiple pounds of powder in your initial order, you're going to be set really for several years depending on how much you shoot your muzzleloader. I go through a few pounds a year, but I shoot quite a bit. There are folks that go through less than a pound every year, and there are people that go through five to 10 pounds a year if they're hardcore competitive shooters and hunters. If you get started off with two to five pounds of powder to cut down on that hazmat fee, you're gonna have enough powder for a few years, and you're gonna be able to go through quite a bit of shots and figure out your muzzleloader without having to worry about your supplies. Aside from purchasing at a local retailer or ordering online, I encourage you to look out for, in your local area, a local black powder shooting club. Black powder muzzleloading clubs have been around since the early 1900s here in the United States, and many of them offer powder to their members or will do group buys of powder to distribute that hazmat fee, that $20 hazmat fee, across 10 to 20 or more members. So you're really not adding a whole lot on top of your order if you're able to order through your local club. Plus, you get access to decades of knowledge. Really, probably at most clubs, over 100 years of combined knowledge of muzzleloading at your local club that you can tap into to learn a lot faster and get going sooner. NMLRA.org will have a full list of the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association charter clubs across the country to get you started. As far as the pros go for flintlocks, they're cheap to shoot in comparison and the supplies are readily available. You don't have to rely on outside distributors if you don't want to. All of what you use to shoot and enjoy your flintlock can be made at home if you follow basic safety practice. Flintlocks are also, I think, the coolest kind of muzzleloader here in the United States. They're just something mystical and, and really awesome about a flint and steel igniting your main charge and sending it downrange. You've got the smoke of your lock right by your face. You've got the spark in the fire. It's just really neat. It's tied to so much American history wherever you are here in the United States. Really, I think flint locks are awesome. We've talked about the pros and getting started with your flint lock. I wanna talk about a couple of the cons though for my recommendation here for 2024. The primary con for getting into muzzleload and getting started with a flint lock is the barrier to entry and the difference in quality from your more budget friendly locks up to a really nice, fantastically functioning lock. Cheaper locks as found on some sub $800, $900 muzzleloaders that are out there just aren't as nice as some of the locks out there on American-made kits and custom builds. Those fine-tuned American locks can cost over $200, which when we look at the comparison to an affordable sub $500 flintlock kit that's out there, that's half the money, but that money is put into fine engineering and tuning craftsmanship to make that lock work quite a bit better. That's not at all to say that those cheaper locks aren't worth it. It's a means to get started and it's a means to get understanding and get working with your first muzzleloader. You by no means have to go out there and pick up an expensive muzzleloader as your first muzzleloader. If you're wanting to try this out, say you want to pick up and get started with the Pennsylvania flintlock season or another state's heritage focused muzzleloading season, you can be successful and enjoy your time with an entry level affordable flintlock muzzleloader. And that's why I'm recommending it for 2024. This is by no means all of the pros and cons. I think they're the first really primary pros and cons that people are gonna run into and what you're gonna run into if you get started with a flintlock here in 2024. There's a ton of other learning to do out there. There's a ton of other videos about this on YouTube to get you started. And I really encourage you to do some research, figure out what you wanna do, and don't rush into the first muzzleloader that you see, regardless of the type that you're interested in, make sure you slow down and do your research and pick out the one that you want first. I'm a big fan of buy once, cry once, so even if I have to save for an extra year or two, I'm going to do that to try to get into something that I can enjoy for generations. Muzzleloading here in the United States has been around since its beginning, and it's going to continue to be because of that generational passion. So if you can pick up your first muzzleloader and fall in love with it, hopefully your great-grandchildren will too. So all of that aside, what if you're not ready to buy a muzzleloader? Say you're just waiting, you're waiting for a deal, you're saving money, you're working long hours. I understand that, that's where I'm coming from here. There's a lot you can do though to get involved with muzzleloading and do a lot of learning before you even pick up your first muzzleloader and your first pound of powder. 
as I mentioned here, YouTube is a great resource. There's decades and decades and decades of knowledge out there. There's some big channels that are doing some fantastic work in educating and the historical side of muzzleloading that I encourage you to check out. There's also the muzzleloading forum as well as the American Long Rifles forum. The muzzleloading forum is more focused on shooting and being out there, being out in the field with your muzzleloader a lot of range testing is happening there. A lot of discussion around muzzleloading in different eras is happening there. There's also the American Long Rifles Forum, which is more focused on a muzzleloading adjacent or traditional crafts that go along with muzzleloaders. Think muzzleloader building, bag making, horn making, kind of the contemporary art side of that. There's also a variety of muzzleloading Facebook groups out there if you're on Facebook. The I Love Muzzleloading Facebook group is just about the 10,000 members as of recording, which is pretty exciting. We've got a good group there sharing knowledge and information uh, based on or, or really bridging the gap between beginner and, and expert, we'll say, in muzzleloading. Um, so check that out if you're on Facebook. Don't discount, though, old media. I've been going through my library here recently, learning a ton about the historical side of muzzleloaders in the 17th century, which is awesome. Uh, there's a ton of fantastic fantastic books out there about any aspect of muzzling that you could be interested in. Uh, many of these books are small publication runs, so you're supporting small independent media, but because of that small independent media, you can access a variety of niche topics within muzzleloading to satisfy whatever you are interested in. Along with books, there are a few great magazines out there. Muzzle Blasts is the official publication of the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association. And then you also have Muzzleloader Magazine, which is a traditional muzzleloader focused magazine out there. So you have a couple options there for periodical publications to keep your interest up in muzzleloading, but in a more traditional on paper format which we all know and love. And then to get you out of your house, get your nose out of that book, kid, get out into the real world, check out your local events, clubs, and seek out some classes. There's a ton of opportunities out there to learn from experienced muzzleloading enthusiasts. Your local club, as I mentioned before, is gonna be a wealth of generational knowledge. Local classes, if you can find them in your area, many times you can get scholarships through the Contemporary Long Rifle Association or the National Muzzleloading Rifle Association to pay your way through some of these classes. So I encourage you to check that out to get a serious jump start into whatever your interest in muzzleloading. So if you've gotten this far, you might be wondering why should you listen to me? Uh, there's a ton of great voices out there and this is just one man's opinion. I will say though, as far as my credentials go on, on why this recommendation or, or why you should take this recommendation seriously, I'm a fourth generation muzzleloading enthusiast. Uh, one of my grandfathers got started in the 1930s and the other got started when he came back from World War II. I'm really just a guy that loves muzzleloading. Uh, it's been in my family now for a few generations and it's something that I just feel in my core. I love getting people started in muzzleloading and, and trying to help people get this going. And that's, that's why I'm making this video. This video isn't sponsored. I'm not making anything off of this. I just want to help as much as I can get more people into this so that we can see it through for future generations. That's all I've got for you folks. Get out there, get your flint lock get practiced with it and enjoy the heck out of it. I know you will. If you'd like to learn more or find some more resources, I'll have some links in the video description as well as at ilovemuzzleloading.com where you can find just a plethora of resources added weekly to guide you and help you along your muzzleloading journey. Much of the stuff that I mentioned in this video as far as the associations and some of the classroom opportunities as well as muzzleloading clubs across the country will be there with the blog post accompanying this video. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.